back to the channel. We are sitting out in the hills of Missouri <laughs> in the, the Mark Twain National Forest. Um, we're not in the Manistee National Forest like usual. If you watch our videos, <laughs> we go there a lot because it's close. Um, we are on the biggest trip, overlanding camping trip we've ever been on. We, like so many people, we have Monday and Tuesday off and we took the rest of that week and the following. So we're on a two week adventure. Um, we found this dispersed spot and we're out here all alone. It's nice. And uh, found this site on iOverlander, which I've looked at a lot, but I've never actually used, found a spot and went to it. This is the first time. And that was really handy. So um, we're, not familiar with this area at all we just knew this was a looking at the map where we're heading to where our next stop is this tonight's just a layover point for us so we needed a spot to camp so i got on overlander kind of started looking at the general area of the mark twain national forest and then started zeroing in kind of in our path it took us a little out of our path if we would have stayed on the expressway straight to our next destination i keep saying next destination because i'm not going to tell you we've got this is going to be such a long road trip with a lot packed in and a lot of exciting places. So this is going to very likely probably have to be a multi-video series. Um, but it's going to be a lot of exciting places. <laughs> Did I say that already? Yeah. I'm pretty stoked. Yeah. I'm pretty stoked. You're just going to have to watch the videos and follow along to find out where all these places are that we're going to go to. Um, some of them are going to be pretty epic, epic. Some of them are going to mean a lot to us. I don't know how they be, how exciting they'll be for you. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, they should make for a good video. But um, so tonight, like I said, tonight's just the layover night uh, in the Mark Twain National Forest. I overlander. We found this spot. Nobody around. Nice, quiet campsite. Other than the rolling thunder. Rolling thunder. We are kind of concerned about the storm that may be coming. It says 25% chance of a severe thunderstorm. <laughs> so 25% is good odds. Right. However, we drove it's not 25% of light rain coming. No, we drove so, through some nice stuff. So. Yeah, coming through. I've got a co-worker, Keith. Keith, if you're watching my video, as you usually do, I may not ever come to your town again because I was seriously <laughs> afraid that our trailer was going to get blown over on the expressway. We came through south of St. Louis. From the south end of St. Louis for quite a ways out of there. Um, dark clouds, heavy winds, rain. Swirling winds. Swirling wind. winds. <laughs> we were watching debris go across the highway and then come back. So swirling winds, heavy winds pushing the Jeep. The rooftop trailer is a little top heavy, I think, because the tent's so high. And then you add side winds to it on the expressway. I was watching my mirror, not watching traffic. I was looking at my mirror at my trailer. <laughs> so we came through some some uh, pretty severe storm, probably what what looked like. I don't know how bad it got up there after we passed through it, but uh, it was a little concerning. We I ate know. dinner. We like I said, we drove all day. We got up eight o'clock this morning. We packed everything yesterday. Um, she worked till noon. I worked full day and then throughout the week because this is our biggest trip we've been kind of working on things throughout the whole week preparing for this trip and had almost everything loaded last night so we got to camp quickly set everything up she cooked we ate egg roll in a bowl one of our go-to's while we're camping is so good so we got some dinner and um, just gonna chill around the fire tonight or camp no fire no fire no. relax for a bit get some sleep because first thing tomorrow morning, like I said, this is just a layover. So first thing tomorrow morning, we're heading farther south toward our next destination, to our next destination. So hopefully you'll follow along because I think it's going to get pretty exciting. So pretty cool spots. Cool. <laughs> With some pretty cool people. Always. Always. Good times. So, so yeah, stick around. You'll see. It's going to be fun. Good morning. It's Sunday morning in the Mark Twain National Forest. Um, today's a, pretty much a travel day for us. We'll probably find some things along the way because our our next trip is only six or seven hours, and we woke up early, earlier than normal. Just 
I don't know, excitement maybe. But um, so we've got plenty of time today, but we didn't want to um, make a big breakfast and make a mess of the disc and everything and have to clean up. So um, we're using the Camp Chef jet stove, the Striker, and we're gonna just heat up water and do coffee. And we're gonna make instant oatmeal. Just get a quick breakfast, pack things up and get on the road. We'll be opening it up again tonight, so it'll get dried out. Um, it's a pretty good campsite we, I, for being dispersed and not knowing what we're getting into and uh, for not being familiar here. Um, we're pretty happy with this site for a one night layover place. Probably isn't somewhere I'd want to come out here and camp for a week. There's not, I don't think there's much to do right here other than there's a hiking trail. But uh, for our use for a layover night, and we're all alone we have not seen anybody or heard anybody since we've been out here even though there's a tr hiking trailhead right there <laughs> but um so yeah we're gonna grab some coffee and breakfast and start packing up got all packed up obviously we're on the road just um on our way up here i think it's probably only like a half hour from here we came through a little town of bismarck Ar uh, not arkansas we're Still in Missouri. Missouri. <laughs> Bismarck, Missouri. And it looks like this is a small town, but then there's a section that it looked like like the old part of town. And, it, and the town has grown from that. Driving through, it looks like a little old, kind of cool little town. So we're going to drive back in there and uh, drive back into town and just kind of check it out see what's there just get some pictures because it looked really cool it looked like a train depot maybe um, again today is uh, travel day so our next point is another is a campground actually we're gonna stay at a campground and uh, down in Arkansas Carter Cove recreation area I think it's called so we're heading down to that yep got a turtle crossing again not gonna run that dude over. I think it's a box turtle. It's got, I think, I don't know my turtles yes. very well, but it's got a very high shell. We saw one coming in, but farther out. And then us, anyway, <laughs> wildlife. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna go in and check out Bismarck and see what it looks like down there. We'll get some pictures, maybe a little bit of video. And then we're gonna head on down to Carter Cove Recreational Area in Arkansas and see what's down there. All right, today is Sunday, July 2nd, and we are in Bismarck, Missouri. Just a little town we're passing through, and there's a lot more to this town, but this looks like just a little section of like the historic area, the old town. So we just wanted to come back and cruise through and maybe see what's open and check things out. Just looks like a cool little old town, so I think we're gonna Maybe find somewhere to park and walk just a little bit. We're not going to spend too much time here because we've got traveling to do, but got an old train station and this looks like a cool little old town. <laughs> we checked out that little town. It's a cute little town, but it's Sunday. So most of the shops were closed. So we didn't really get to see much other than what you just saw driving through, but It'd be interesting to go there. I mean, there's not a lot. You're not gonna spend a lot of time there, but it'd be neat to go through the little shops on a day that they're all open. So we're gonna move on. Sunday evening, it's going on five o'clock local. <laughs> local being uh, so Southwest Arkansas, I believe this would be considered. We drove pretty much most of today across the state of Arkansas what felt like forever <laughs> through some really sunny hot areas through a torrential downpour back into sunny hot areas mostly most of the day it's been over 100 now, now it's 98 now it's only 98 cooled off i think it peaked at like 103 so it's been pretty hot pretty hot day driving so we finally got down to carter cove recreation area to our campsite. Turn up the window so you can hear some better. Uh, so we got, uh, got to our campsite. We got set up. It's in a campground. It's even up paved. We're not dispersed tonight, but we're going to get showers, so that'll be cool. 
but we are about 15 minutes from the Washita National Forest. I've never been there. So we uh, this is another layover night in route to our next destination, but when you're this close to the Washita National Forest, you gotta go check it out, right? So that's where we're heading right now. We're, we don't have a lot of time, so we're not gonna be out there long. We're gonna go check out some trails and then get back to our campsite because we're gonna have an early morning getting on the road to our next destination. Our next destination is only a couple hours drive in the morning, so that's gonna be kind of fun to check out. But uh, we're gonna go find some trails. We'll get some video there. Well, this is the kind of luck we've been having. We leave the campground because the Wash the uh, Washita National Forest is so close. We want to go out and run some trails. We're probably 10 or 15 minutes from the campground. It was nice and sunny at the campground. And now we're getting out into the Washita and it's washing it all. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna do any trails. This is pretty nasty. It was raining so hard, as you could see, but it, it actually got a little worse. It was raining so hard I couldn't really see very good. So I saw a place to pull off right before a bridge. We pulled off and it was basically a dirt trail that went down to the river. Nothing really there, but it's a good place to turn around. As hard as it was raining, we were just looking at turning around and head back to the campground. While I was down there turning around, another Jeep pulled in and they're local. So Darren and company, <laughs> thanks for the tip. Right now we are driving down Trail 86. But uh, Darren told us about Trail 86 here. It was on our way back toward our campground. And um, it's pretty much a gravel road for the first few miles, he said. But then when we get farther in, uh, it gets more, narrows down more of a trail. So I don't, um, we'll see what it looks like when we get farther in when it's, uh, when it narrows and to see how much we want to get into out here. We'll just run this trail, see what it, see what we find here. It's about 5.30 at night and um, we're not quite a half hour, maybe a half hour from our campsite if at the most. So we'll check out this trail a little bit tonight and, uh, and then head back. And our first highlighted destination of this trip. <laughs> We're pulling in right now to the Crater of Diamonds State Park in Arkansas, Murfreesville, Arkansas. So we're gonna try our luck. See if we can find a diamond. Like I said before, I don't think we're gonna spend a lot of time out here. It's already 86 degrees, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. So, we're gonna get out here, scavenge around in the dirt or however this all works and see if we can find a diamond until her heart is content. Get sunburned. Huh? I'm gonna get sunburned is what you're gonna and get. Get some sunburn <laughs> and move on. So stick around, we'll see what this is like, see if we find a diamond. So we got our bucket of dirt and stuff <laughs> and we're going over to this um, sifting station I think it is clay bumps and break it down some before it'll even sift <laughs> Crater of Diamonds State Park what do you think hon? hot it's really hot out there you can see that whole field's out in the sun if you can see in the background, there is a uh, roofed area and that's water troughs where you can wet sift. So we were under there for a little while after we dug some dirt into it. You can rent equipment. We've got a, a bucket, a small shovel, 
and two sifting boxes. One is fine, the other is pretty coarse, about a quarter inch uh, holes. The other one is small, almost like window screen, Not, probably a little bit more coarse than that. Um, so you dig up the dirt. You can either surface, just walk around and look for the shine. You can dry sift out in the field, out in the freaking sun, in the surface of hell. Or pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> or you can sift, dig up some dirt, which we did, haul it over to the wet sifting troughs and wet sift it and then inspect it off. Um, in the shade. In the shade. So <laughs> it's still hot though. Um, I don't know how hot it is. I'll, maybe I'll let you know when we get back to the Jeep, but pretty hot. So we spent, I don't know, a couple hours and uh, as you would expect, we didn't find anything. <laughs> so no getting rich today. So now on to Fort Worth. Well, we're going to make a pass through to Queen, Arkansas. Um, one of my best friends, one of my military buddies, he's originally from the Queen. Um, we were stationed in Alaska together, he still lives up there. Hi JP, Kathy. So we're going to make a stop into Queen and just to get a photo up to send to my buddy JP and then on to Fort Worth to see our good friends. Great. Alright, stick with us. Hey baby. What state are we in now? It's in the evening, so we got into town a little late in the evening, so the uh, like the walk through, um, I don't even know exactly what it is, it's closed. So we're just looking at some of the gift shops, got some t-shirts and stuff, and I'll show you some of the town a little bit as we get back to our Jeep and move on. Museum. We got here too late for that one. All right. Have you seen what you wanted to see in Roswell? Yes. Yeah. It's a bunch of gift shops. There's a museum that we didn't get to go through, like I said. 
I don't really know what else is around here, but um, we we're coming here. It's on our in route to where we're headed, so we thought we might as well buzz into town. But we didn't come here to like spend an entire day anyway. So we saw a few things. We got some souvenirs. We're moving on. We had some strong crosswinds through this section uh, west of Roswell. <laughs> Out in the open here. It's got a little wrench on it. at night and we are in the Snowy River Cave area near Fort Stanton on BLM land. Um, there's a campground with about five sites and a pit toilet early on this trail but it was kind of busy so um, what we saw on iOverlander this is how we found this site or this area but somebody else said if that camp area was Full, just to keep following the trail back in the mountains and uh, there's other spots and we found a few different spots but we're just looking for that spot <laughs> um, so we're just getting back here a little further in and uh, we're losing daylight so we want to find a site here pretty soon and start getting set up up on a herd of elk. standing there looking at us with antlers still in velvet. They look like a, a herd of young bulls. None of them have a very big rack or real big full bodied. But every one of them has a nice little rack there. Cool. We just came over a hill in there right there. Caught us off guard. It almost looks like somebody's got a food pot maybe. Okay. Sorry, guys. No, no. Bye. You can go back and eat. <laughs> That's Good morning. It's a little after 6.30 on Thursday morning. We were able to find this beautiful camp spot in BLM land in New Mexico. The sunset, I didn't get pictures because uh, we were really busy setting up camp because we got in kind of late. Had a beautiful sunset. And uh, I know there's more epic campsites, but this is the most epic campsite we've ever stayed at just in the hills or in the low mountains of New Mexico and great views, 
nice really open site there's already a fire ring we didn't have a fire I don't know what the fire ban situation is right now and like I said we're getting kind of late so once we sat up and had a bite to eat we just crawled up into the tent for the night but uh I think we're gonna skip doing breakfast we got a long day ahead of us today a long road uh, long day on the road excuse me so we're gonna get cleaned up get some clean clothes on get freshened up then pack up camp and get out of here so we'll get some video on the trail getting out back out to the road because it's kind of a cool trail too but uh, we're gonna get at it well we got camp packed up and we're on the trail we're just about back to the road but this concludes our first dispersed camping in BLM land in New Mexico. Good job, man. <laughs> so, like we were saying, today's pretty much travel day. We're going to head towards Sedona, Arizona. And uh, it's like eight hours of road time from here. Um, this is a huge overlanding trip, so there's a lot of highway. Um, I know in all the videos that people show, they make it look like overlanding is all dirt road, backcountry. What they don't show you is there is a lot of highway because the places we go are so far apart that uh, it would take two months probably to do the two week trip we're doing. I know it's stuffed up. So we're going to get back on the road. Welcome to Arizona, baby. Lyman Lake State Park and uh, it was pretty cool seeing those ruins down there we were gonna take the hike or thought about taking the hike up to the petroglyphs but the volunteer at the park said it was an hour to an hour and a half hike and it's 102 <laughs> so no not today <laughs> we honestly were just driving down this highway heading towards Sedona we got another three hours before we get there and we saw it on the side road, let's go check it out. So we just pulled in. Did not expect to get to go see ruins or petroglyphs, so um, we did go down to see the ruins, as you saw. And that was pretty awesome. I've only ever seen those kind of Pueblo or Indian, ancient Indian ruins on TV and pictures. That was my first time seeing them in person, so that was definitely well worth the uh, $10 day pass. Like I told Lisa, if somebody said five bucks a piece, you can drive back there and see uh, ancient ruins, that'd be worth it to me. So I'm happy. You happy? Yeah. All right, we're going to get back on the road, get the breeze going because it's 102. <laughs> First time seeing the Grand Canyon. What do you think, baby? <laughs> it's great. It's pretty amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Desert View Road. A little different angle of the valley over here, up the canyon. More than just a little valley. <laughs> that rock over there is 
I really don't think you'll be able to see it with the GoPro because everything looks so, so far away, but from here we can actually see the, the Colorado River flowing. You can see the white water down there. I don't know if you can see it right. I think I'm pointing at it right down there. <laughs> All right, we are at the Tucson Museum and Ruins. The museum's closed right now. Um, there's some Native American art over there, but there's also these ruins. So we're gonna hike down a little ways, walk down, it's not a big hike, but we're gonna go check that out. It's a cool building. After another long day in the sun, <laughs> as you saw, we went to South Rim and North Rim, and or not the North Rim yet. Sorry, we're traveling to the North Rim. We're, I think we're about 20 miles from North Rim, 2025. Um, we're in a small campground tonight. Lisa's making broccoli, and uh, no, I'm not. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm tired. Asparagus. In case, for those of you who noticed, that ain't, that ain't broccoli. Asparagus and some sausage. I've got water going for coffee. But uh, we were gonna disperse camp tonight, but there's wildfires in the area and there's a lot of spots that are blocked. A sign uh, at the end of the entrance to the trail <coughs> said, um, it's the fire has already, wildfires have already gone through there. So there's a closed camping. Um, there's a lot of smoke around here and there's a lot of wildfire still going on as you saw in the video but no we didn't get any video actually by the time we got the camera out we were past it but um, we passed some ongoing wildfire it was more of smoldering and small smoke still coming up and then there's more wildfire still active so rather than being out dispersed by ourselves with a wildfire active we decided to come in. To, it, there was a campground we saw. Thought we'd come in and see if they had any openings. They had one slot left, so we took it. And uh, so, if the wildfires through the night while we're sleeping do come to this area, at least we're in a campground. Somebody can wake us up, whatever. I don't think it's going to come to that. But if that would have been the case, I'd rather happen in a campground than out by ourselves in the woods somewhere. So, um, we're. It's you can tell the lights getting low. Uh, we got in here a little bit later than, as usual, later than we'd like. <laughs> so we got everything, got set up, and uh, gonna have some dinner and just chill, and then probably crawl into bed early tonight. So we're gonna wrap this one up for today, and uh, tomorrow is North Rim, and we'll see what's after that. Good morning. 
couldn't even tell you what day it is. Lost track. Saturday. Saturday, July 8th. 8th. <laughs> <clears throat> Camped at the campground as we talked about and uh, got up, made coffee, just did quick oatmeal so we have less cleanup, get out of there quicker. It's, uh, we don't know. We're not sure what time it is because we don't know. What time is your Thanks. I don't know, I've got 8.45, 7.45, and 7.45, so let's go with 7.45. Either it says 8.45, so we don't it, know. It's either 7.45 <laughs> or 8.45, depending on what. I don't know, man. Our, our phones are contradict each other, which they should be getting the time off the towers for local time, but I don't know. So anyway, we just pulled out of the campground, We've got, I think, about 20 miles to the North Rim. So that is our first destination today, the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. We just passed a sign that said, watch for Buffalo Crossing. So we're really hoping to see some Buffalo. But uh, stick around, we'll be at the North Rim in a little bit. We are at the North Rim and there's a lot of, there's like a lodge here, some cabins, different things, it's pretty cool. Um, we're going to do one of the shorter, easier trails, Bright Angel Point, that's the, the main one I wanted to come see anyways because it gets you out on a point over the canyon here at North, North Rim. And we'll set the camera on that tree. <laughs> These are awesome, they're uh, ponderosa pines. but. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of cabin and you know, lodge and visitor center and everything. There's places to fill your water bottles, bathrooms. Um, the campground we stayed at last night, I, man, terrible at names, as you've known. If you watch the videos, you know I'm always like, what was the name of that? The campground we stayed at last night had some of the cleanest pit toilets there that we've ever been in. No smell. No smell. <laughs> Very clean. That was nice. <laughs> um, so, oh, so you see some of the cabins on the left here, on, my, on our right, and the valley's on the left. So I'm going to turn the camera on a little bit, but we'll get more video out on the point as well. We were just reading some of the signs along the side of the trail and they said because the north rim is higher than the south rim it gets a lot more precip precipitation rainfall snowfall and a lot of the um, the water there's again terrible names some spring I don't know but um, the water runs into a particular place that they use that water at both the north and the south rim and said when we fill our water bottles up at the visitor center up there, that water is from the uh, natural aquifer. Um, a lot of the water runs fast over the top. Some of the water seeps through the tighter cracks. All of it goes down to the aquifer. And that's where they basically harvest the water for the drinking water on, on the north and south rims. This trail is labeled as easy, which <laughs> it really is. It's paved, um, but she has bad meniscus and there's sections that are kind of steep and it's the downhills that really hurt her knee. So um, just something to be aware of if you come out here. The trail is easy, but it is some, it's steep coming down in sections, coming down to Bright Angel Point. So obviously we're gonna have to climb that. Um, and this is kind of why we gave up backpacking because of our knees. So just something to be aware of. It is, you know, technically it's an easy trail, but there is something to keep in mind if you have bad knees or whatever.
that'd be enough for me to jump off. <laughs> to the right is where we came from. We're going to check out this other trail over here. Alright, we just did Bright Angel Point. We're going to take a portion of the transept trail. Because I know, looking at the maps earlier, once we get out this trail a ways, now we're on the other side of this kind of peninsula out to Bright Angel. We went down the other side. So when we follow this trail back, then there's a nature trail that cuts back across to back to where we parked. So we're going to take this one up and see what this one looks like. Didn't expect this, not sure what it is. It goes into the lower level of the lodge. Oh, it's just a little lookout. Oh, this is cool. Nice shaded. Oh, it's nice and cool in all this rock. And then you got the views with benches up in here. <laughs> I don't think these steps are built to code. <laughs> That's why they have a sign. <laughs> what you know they're not. <laughs> By the way, these steps are not even <laughs> not at the same height. <laughs> <laughs> pretty hiking through this Arizona ponderosa pine forest. What do you think, honey? It was good. <laughs> Long ways. <laughs> Long ways, yeah. Like I said in other videos, we don't hike as much as we used to. I don't know how much the altitude has to do with it. Where we live, we're usually below a thousand feet. And here, this ain't 12,000, but we are up around, I think, seven or eight thousand, so and we're getting old <laughs> but it is beautiful out here really enjoying it all right so that was the north rim that was equally impressive and way less people so we watched some videos and on one of the videos we watched they had said it's only 10 percent of the people visitors go to just past the gas station, we're gonna turn around. Only 10% of the visitors go to the North Rim. And it was definitely a lot less people at the North Rim than the South Rim. And uh, 
I don't think it was any less impressive. The views are spectacular. The hike out to Bright Angel Point was rough. It was really easy, other than just a, some uh, little hill climb and descent, but not bad. I mean, it was definitely worth it. So we're gonna get some gas here, and then oh, we're gonna no, head we're north. We're not. Oh, or maybe we are. Did it say regular? Yeah, I'm let it. Oh, three eighty eight. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> we're gonna get gas here, and then we're gonna head north. So I'm gonna let you guess at the moment if we're gonna go to Zion, Bryce, Monument Valley, Grand es Grand Staircase Escalante. Which one do you think we're going to? Find out, stick around. <music> out of the visitor center um, as we're coming through the gate the ranger told us that we'd be very limited on like the first four miles we couldn't go in any of the pullouts with the trailer but he said a couple options were to park park the Jeep and the trailer and take the shuttles or we can drop the trailer in the parking lot and drive the Jeep and go wherever we want so that's what we did drop the trailer in the parking lot put the hitch lock on it <laughs> And uh, this way we can go at our own pace to all of the pull-offs and everything. So just looking at the map and we're just gonna head into the park and find the pull-offs and the scenery and get some video in there. This one's called Far View Point. We're trying to figure out where it gets its name from. <laughs> Pretty sure you can see most of Utah from right here. All right, we just hooked back up to the trailer. We saw all the sights we're gonna see. Bryce Canyon is a wrap. Um, we went to a lot of the overlook points. It's too hot, we're too old to be hiking. <laughs> uh, we're just hot and tired and we didn't want to do the hikes. We just wanted to see Bryce Canyon, see the lookouts. We saw several of them. I didn't even video all of them because as beautiful as they are, I think in the video it would get redundant, see them all over and over. And it's going to be a lot of, we're at this point, a small view, and we're at this point, a small view. And I didn't want to keep doing that through the video. So we saw a bunch of them. It was beautiful. But now it's time to move on. It's getting later in the evening. So we need to get out. We're going to find some dinner because we're both hungry. And then go find our campsite. All right, so we're following a trail out into the National Forest. <clears throat> I'm actually not sure which national forest because where we're at, there's no signal. And I don't have the offline maps. So, I'm not even sure what national forest we're in, but 
We're about, we're somewhere between um, Bryce Canyon and Escalante. And Escalante. Are you sure about this one? Oh, for you. Kind of into it now, man. Oh. All right. As usual, we found a campsite late, <laughs> so we hurried up, got things set up. Um, before we left Bryce uh, area, we went into a restaurant, had dinner because we knew we had limited time. So even though that took a little longer getting dinner, at least we didn't have to cook and clean up tonight. So we were able to get out here. Found a place, uh, place on BLM land. There's an established fire ring out on a trail. Obviously cows out here. <laughs> There's cow patties around. But uh, we're in a little valley. So I don't think it's gonna get too windy down here. Um, so we're just gonna, uh, I think we're gonna crawl up in a tent, play on the phones a little bit. We got no signal, but we got some games on our phones, so. Probably just play around in those for a little bit and call it a night. So we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. So we just woke up a little bit ago here on uh, BLM land. We didn't make coffee or breakfast or anything. We just got up and got everything packed up. We're gonna keep moving. Um, today we're heading toward Moab. Um, I know Escalante is in between. We're getting pretty close to Escalante. So I'm not sure if we'll stop in there or not, or what else is in between here in Moab, but uh, we'll see. Um, so we're just gonna work our way off the BLM land back out to the road and keep heading that direction. We are in Moab, Utah. Finally. We're sitting in the parking lot right now at the visitor center. Got some maps, got an idea of some of the locations we want to camp. It is 107 degrees. <laughs> and of course, no air conditioning in the Jeep, so that's fun. Um, but we got some maps of the trails we want to do. We're not out here to, to wreck the Jeep. We're not going to do hard trails. We're going to do um, some pretty cool trails though. So, uh, but right now we're gonna get moving because it's freaking hot. And we're gonna, I think we better fuel up first. And then we're gonna head out um, north of town, out toward Canyonlands, and find some, try to find a campsite, set the trailer up, and then go hit some trails. We don't wanna drag this tra trailer through the trails. <laughs> so, after talking to the guy in the visitor center, we got some maps. There's plenty you can buy. He was showing us one and was telling us flat out, these are free ones. You can buy that one if you want, but these are free and here's where you want to go because we were asking a lot of questions. The guy was super helpful because we tend to wing it a lot <laughs> and we probably should have done a little more research, but um, Not our stuff. we didn't know that and we didn't know the dates that we were going to be here. We didn't know if everything was going to stay in order or whatever, and it didn't. We're here. We skipped Sedona, if you've been watching the videos, we skipped Sedona and came, uh, that skipped the whole day basically, so he was super helpful, we got maps, he showed us where uh, dispersed camping is in BLM land, and I forgot what the other area was called, but uh, we're going out to where he showed us where there's supposed to be some really nice sites out on BLM. And we're gonna try to drop the tramp the trailer like I was saying and uh, then go find some trails or go sightseeing. But first thing we not wanna do is try to find a campsite, drop this trailer and get it set up.
Alright, we drove all the way out to the end of a peninsula based off of what the uh, guy at the visitor center told us <coughs> that there would be really cool campsites out here. Depends on what you think is cool because they probably are really awesome because they're scenic like this, overlooks, but they're just sitting wide open in the sun. There's no shade. Um, so quite a ways back by that giant red rock. Butte, Bluff, whatever those things are called. We're gonna head back toward that. And uh, I think set up camp back there because one, this was a really long drive at the pace you have to drive on the trail. And we wanna get to uh, Arches pretty early in the morning. And at trail speeds this far out, that'd be a long ride very early in the morning. So we're gonna head back in a little ways. This trail we're on, start up there, you can see the viewing point. Coming down some um, embedded rock stairs that they've created, which is nice to get down here. It's called Park Avenue? Yes. Park Avenue. <laughs> so I don't think there's an arch out here. I think it's just a canyon hike down between the walls of the canyon. I'll turn the camera around and show you that. It is 7.10 and we're at the end, well, the turnaround point of our first hike. I'm not really sure how much farther it goes in the canyon, but as you can maybe see in this video, there's cars right there. So we're almost to the road on the other side. Maybe that's a quarter mile away. So we're gonna call this a good turnaround point and we're gonna head back up the canyon. But this is pretty remarkable. It's it's incredible view here. I'll do a, I'll do a 360 for you. Alright, so we're gonna start hiking back up to the Jeep and move on to the next one. I think the next one is gonna be one of the arches, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Alright, these arches are called the windows. There's one way over there we're not hiking to. <laughs> There's this one up here that we're climbing up to. It's huge. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But in the rock over there, there's another one. I can see you. Right about him here somewhere? <laughs> Out there? <laughs> Pretty cool here. We've been here before, but it's still awesome. So we're gonna get up in this bigger one. I thought this one was elephant eye, but it's this is one of the windows. <laughs>
that's an alternate route that way. This oh. is a harder route. Okay, we could have went the alternate. <laughs> you take alternates unless they're hard. Damaging. This is just little steps. The stock Jeep went through it. <laughs>
Good job. Thank you. I got some video. I'll send it to you.